This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The well-known stress of a job interview. It's scary walking into a room with the sole purpose of an organization vetting you. But how often do we vet the place we're hoping to work for? In today's story, our narrator will be forced to decide what he's willing to overlook. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend, Shane Madey, the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end. Help Wanted. It had been nine months since I got laid off, and I was getting desperate. I ran social media for a community college before they realized a student could do it and be paid in course credits. I applied to every social media manager opening I could find, then to any other job someone might argue I was qualified for. Nothing. Beyond rent, beyond even food, I needed a job for health insurance. Most other 24-year-olds don't care much about insurance, but I have a persistent cough, something the men in my family have always had, kind of like asthma, but with a deep, hollow cough. Usually, it's manageable. But when my grandfather was found dead in his apartment when I was three, doctors pointed to the cough. Is it normal to have a persistent cough? Because I always thought that was just a thing in movies to communicate that a character was going to die soon. Yeah, usually he'll cough into like a little tissue, blood will be on it, he'll hide it from the family at the dinner table, Papa's fine, kind of thing. Yeah. Tuberculosis. Tizzle bizzle. I just don't ever want to be found dead. I want everyone to see Yeah, and that's completely contradictory to things you've said in the past. You have said that you wanted to be found dead in a field. No, 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 I don't care what they do with my body when I'm dead, but I think it'd be nice for a lot of people to witness yeah. my demise. But if I was at home, let's say I'm an old man, and okay. I'm like, I could feel it, I'm about to die. Oh. What I would do instead of like write a message to my loved ones or something, I would try to put myself in the funniest pose I possibly could think of, sure. so that when people found me, I'm like a... What, what are you doing? Yeah. What if I was like this? And like they found me in rigor mortis like... <laughs> That's <laughs> or, pretty good. Or just like... Yeah. That's a nice gift. Exactly. Because it's going to be horrifying to find Grandpa dead, but if he's like... Yeah, with sunglasses on, like back, Weekend at Bernie's yeah. or something. Has a beer in his hand or something like that, just oh. like this. Or one of those beer helmets on. I mean, it'd be cool to go out on your own terms. I think so. There you go. Yeah. Thelma and Louise. You and me, driving over a cliff. Since then, my dad and I always carry an emergency inhaler, but because I'd been off health insurance for so long, mine had expired. Like I said, I was getting desperate. One morning, scrolling through Craigslist on the bus, I saw a listing for a social media consultant. The job was at a place I'd never heard of, Tanafee, for applicants with lots of connections and experience making things go viral. As I applied, I launched into a coughing fit. My busmate stared as I struggled to breathe normally. Once the coughing slowed, I muttered, it's not contagious, it's hereditary. No one ever believes me, but I still say it. You can't be looking for jobs on Craigslist. I sold my dresser on Craigslist. I did fear for my life when we met up. Well, I feel like you're just gonna get tricked into kissing a serial killer or something. But wouldn't that mean you're searching for posts in which you're smooching a, a serial killer? I feel like they're like, we got a great job for you, benefits. And then you show up and they're like, the benefit is you get to smooch me. Then you walk out the door. Yeah, but you're already there. <laughs> <laughs> that night, I got an email from Eric at Tanafee.com. Eric was impressed with my exaggerated resume and wanted to set up a call. We set up a time for the next morning, and as due diligence, I opened Twitter to scout Tanafee's social media presence. Bizarrely, Tanafee didn't have a social media presence to scout. No Twitter, no Instagram, not even a Facebook. Not even a Facebook. And that's like Boomer Town too. That's Boomer City Every Boomer USA. would have usually at least yeah. a Facebook. It's rotting their brains. And it's where they would- uh, <laughs> They're no good anymore. Air out their opinions. <laughs> Remember they used to tell us stuff all the time, like this is how you're supposed to be. <laughs> Don't do that, <laughs> that's wrong. And now they're like, <laughs> what is the world? <laughs> what are facts and reality? <laughs> well, the action was rigged. <laughs> the next morning, 
my phone rang. Half expecting a Russian scammer, Eric's soft voice surprised me. He explained that Tanafi was an old pharmaceutical company looking to modernize its brand. I was worried Eric would ask about my inflated resume, but thankfully, he mostly stuck to questions about my life and hobbies. He said a good social life was important at Tanafi. I said I couldn't agree more. It's nice to hear a company interviewing you and saying like work-life balance is a, is a big thing here. That's true. I think that's, uh, you know, admirable. Red flag though, Eric emailed him after hours. Not practicing what they preach. Though at Watcher, I would say that some of us don't always uh, practice healthy work-life balance. Uh, not me, uh, 6 p.m., I'm done. You know that about. <laughs> that's true, that is true. He's, he's pretty good at that. I, I, I was talking about me, I was, that, that's me. I'm... Yeah, you're sick. After 30 minutes, Eric told me I'd pass the phone interview, and we set up an in-person. As he hung up, Eric started speaking to someone else in the room with him. It sounded like he said, one more lead. When I first arrived at Tanafi's building, I hoped I had the wrong address. Soot had built up on the beige stucco building, wedged between an abandoned gas station and some unmarked warehouse. The landlords had given up on repainting over graffiti years ago, surrendering the west wall to art pursuits of the 78th Street Crazies. Oh. If you're in a gang called the 78th Street Crazies, that's a lot to live up to. You, gotta be, you gotta be crazy. You gotta be crazy every yeah. single time. You gotta be like, nice to meet ya, and then pour a Diet Coke on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Do you think a 78th Street Crazy member just wants to you know, go to a Starbucks one day and read a book, but no. they can't because they gotta be 78th Street Crazy yeah, all the time. He wants to swing a possum around and throw yeah, it yeah. <laughs> Throw it at a nun. It's tough to always be on. It's I'm always, always on, man. I'll fit in with them. Look at me. I'm on. Yeah, I mean, you, you, <laughs> you do that until you fall asleep. Like, <laughs> it's just immediate. <laughs> and then I wake up like, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Time to go viral. Oh. <laughs> Pulling open the heavy front door, the first thing I noticed was the heat. It was at least 90 degrees in the dark and dusty lobby, and sweat immediately formed on my lower back. A man at least 80 years old sat at a front desk. His eyes climbed all over me as he told me to take a seat, slowly licking his lips. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not very welcoming. Or really welcoming if you're like lonely, I don't know. It's kind of fun. Yeah, I'm licking my lips thinking of summer. Mm. Mm. Disneyland. Mm, mm, mm. Dog parks. Ooh, dog concerts. park. You're looking at your lips for dog parks. Well, just the idea of going like anywhere concerts. Mm, uh, yeah, you know, dog parks. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I took a chair next to a woman about my age, who I assumed was also waiting for an interview. Why do you think it's so hot? She asked. Maybe the AC is broken. I shrugged. I think it's on purpose. She whispered. So women like me wear less clothes. I cleared my throat. <laughs> both because I didn't know what to say to this and because I felt the start of a coughing fit coming on. Not today, I silently baked my lungs. A door on the far end of the room slid open. Out creeped a man even older than the receptionist. His hand shriveled around the handle of an oxygen tank he was wheeling. He inhaled deeply from the yellowing tubes snaking up to his nostrils and smiled, revealing long, gray teeth. He eyed the woman and myself. Maureen? It was the sweet voice from the phone, somehow coming from this wretched body. The woman stood and smoothed her skirt. She shot me a nervous look, and I mouthed, good luck. As she headed for the side door, Eric cleared his throat. Leave your phone. We have sensitive research back there. Eric gave another gray smile as Maureen placed her phone complete with bright yellow case that looked out of place compared to her muted interview outfit on the front desk. The old man opened a drawer and dropped it in as Maureen followed Eric back. I noticed there wasn't any music in the lobby. The only sound was the receptionist's labored breathing. Every couple minutes, I'd steal a glance at him. Every time, he was staring straight at me, smiling horribly and licking his lips. Are you leaving? Yes. You know, it's tough to say. We live in a country where healthcare is tied to your job, which that is, is true. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, it's not great. This person is so in need of healthcare that they're staring at this lip licking, yeah, this old pervert. Or, you know, if, if we want to give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe he just needs chapstick. 
He's staring at him and smiling. I don't even like watching people put on chapstick. It disturbs me. Oh, really? It's just weird. Yeah. Because sometimes people do that thing where they go all the way around. Oh, that's no good. You ever see someone with one of those, uh, the little round tins? I was at a concert once and there was some dead-eyed teen in front of me who had one of those and she took the cap off and went, oh, oh. <laughs> and I remember thinking, that's the most insane thing I've ever seen, and yet, I do that now. <laughs> you fucking install chapstick like it's a fucking hubcap? Yeah, I just go, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> After a half hour, the door on the far side of the room reopened. I expected to see Maureen, but it was Eric, tugging his oxygen tank. Evan, if you hand over your phone, we're ready for you. I pulled out my phone and walked to the desk. There was a thirst in the old receptionist's eyes as he reached for it that made me very nervous. I double checked my phone was locked and handed it over. Much obliged, the man hacked out, placing my phone atop Maureen's bright yellow case. I had pictured the back office filled with shiny equipment and scientists in sterile coats. In reality, the place was even filthier than the outside. Equipment showed signs of rust. Every beaker was caked in grime and the coats of the few scientists I saw, all of them at least in their 70s, were splotched with stains. Eric led me to a musty office with a desk and an old clock on the side wall. He looked closely at the clock, then turned to me, licking his cracked, smiling lips. Eric spoke very slowly. He began by apologizing for the state of the office. Tanafi, he informed me, had been fighting off acquisitions attempts for a while, and the price of lawyers had meant they hadn't been able to update their equipment. They had recently developed a new drug, however, that everyone was excited about. Best of all, Eric said I could work remotely. I answered some basic questions about social media and realized that none of the ancient people at this company would be able to tell if I was good at my job or not. Everything was going well. I'm imagining this old man just being, just like asking him questions like, you, you know about Twitter, can I just see your, can I just feel your calf? Mm, I see. Mm, not meaty. And, and, and you, you use Instagram, so how many followers do you have on there? <laughs> mm, what a good smelling hand you have. Well, I have, uh, have 20,000 followers. Oh, yep, that's, that's my thigh. <laughs> Until that is, a cough lunged out of my throat, then another, and another. In seconds, I was having a full fit. Eric stood, startled, and glanced at the clock. He asked if I was all right. I explained to him the situation and assured him it doesn't impact my work. Instead of the doubting look most people wear when I tell them, Eric gave me a big smile and shook his head like a man in elated disbelief at some stroke of good luck. Okay. We've all coughed or had like a coughing fit I've around. I've coughed, yeah. You imagine if you just, if someone was just like. Yeah, no one's ever given me that reaction. <laughs> Wait, did he look at the He looked at the watch? clock and smiled. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. It zagged. I thought he was gonna get livid and be like, you're no good, get out of here. Instead he was like, party on. Shaka my dude. <laughs> My coughing subsided, but Eric continued to smile and shake his head in silence. After a few minutes, Eric took one last look at the clock and said, if you have no other questions for me, that should do it. Thanks for coming in. You'll be a perfect fit, and we'll let you know when we can move forward. As I shuffled back through the office, past the ancient scientists and the dirty lights, I felt relieved. If I could work remotely and get health insurance, Tanafi seemed tolerable for the time being. My hopes were dashed, however, when I returned to the lobby to get my phone. As the old man pulled open the drawer, I saw the bright yellow plastic of Maureen's case. Somewhere in the building, she was still being interviewed. My coughing fit had changed Eric's mind after all, and I was being shown an early exit. I'm actually surprised he made it out. I didn't think he was gonna make it, so I'm curious if he's gonna get all the way out. But it seems like she's still inside. Shannon? What was her name? Maureen. Clarissa? Maureen. Have some respect. Okay, sorry, Maureen. Having ridden off Tanafi, I spent all my time looking for another job that could give me insurance, as my cough was getting worse. I couldn't even go grocery shopping anymore without falling into at least one fit. Still, no luck. After a week, though, my phone rang. It was Eric. 
It's been chaotic around here, but we're ready to move forward. Could you come back for a final interview tomorrow? I tried to play it cool, but my desperation for a job must have shown through as I gasped a hurried, absolutely, into the receiver. The next morning, I could barely breathe. My lungs felt like they'd been replaced by glowing ashes, and I wondered what I'd do if I didn't get the job and didn't get on Tanafee's insurance. I had no plan B. I needed this job. When I arrived, Tanafee looked like a brand new company. The graffiti had been painted over, and the windows looked freshly washed in the sunlight. Is everybody younger now? I mean, what's I going on? It's a good guess. Brian, I don't know. What's going on here? It, it could be. It's a good guess. Man, that juice must be really good if it's making the building look younger. I want this juice. <laughs> the old man behind the desk looked relieved, like he was glad I showed up. Then, Eric appeared. He gave me a big smile and asked how my cough was. I held up the cup of water I'd been handed and said, better. I handed over my phone to the receptionist and just barely caught out of the corner of my eye a flash of yellow from the drawer. A chill washed over me. Why would Maureen's phone still be there? Then it hit me. Post-it notes. I had mistaken a stack of post-its for a phone. What an idiot. <laughs> Classic, dude. Hello. Oh, huh? <laughs> That's why. What the my, I was just doing some, oh, doing yeah, some object you're work. You're doing some object work Hello? with it. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell. I, is this I, the paramedics? I, I have an emergency. Wait. Oh, wait, this is some yellow stickies. I fuck me. <laughs> I, I guess I just did. It happens to everybody, this right? This guy's like, triple A? Oh, a banana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Yeah, we can move on. I was nervous to get the job, and my brain was playing tricks. Eric led me back through the office. The scientists all appeared to have new coats. Things were really trending up at bang. I spun around at the sound of a loud, crashing clank. Along a sidewall, a huge iron door had swung shut on a gigantic, ancient furnace. We have to incinerate a lot of our work, Eric quickly explained. A lot of your work? Or a lot of your workers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's probably what's happening, right? I don't imagine they're putting pizzas in that bad boy. We have to incinerate a lot of our work, Eric quickly explained. That's why it was so hot last week. I wish we could keep the temperature down, but we all just kind of live with it. Maureen had been wrong. A scientist was simply burning some failed experiment. Everything had an explanation. I had nothing to worry about. Back in the small office, I felt a tickle in the back of my throat as another coughing spasm gathered steam. I tried to hold it off by talking. Everyone's in a good mood today, I offered. For the first time in many years, everything's aligning for Tanafee, smiled Eric. A big part of that is because of you. Congratulations, you're Tanafee's new social media consultant. Relief washed over me. I had a job, I had insurance. As I mentioned, we've developed a new drug that'll save millions of lives. It's a very specific antibiotic devised years ago that we're just about ready to roll out. What do you think is going to happen here? I, I gotta be honest, I have no idea. It's just zagging where I think it's going to zig, and every single time I'm delighted. He shows up, I thought they were going to be like, well, would you like a piece of Maureen? And now they're just, uh, they're like, check out the kitchen, we got free LaCroix if you want. <laughs> Cough, cough. The fit had started, and with a vengeance. The force of the coughs knocked me upright in my seat. See, Eric continued, unbothered by my coughing. While we developed the antibiotic years ago, the pathogen itself took a bit longer. At this, Eric's voice darkened. Years of tweaking bacterial DNA, failure after failure, until we learned the bug could only survive in the blood of the young. Under 25 seems to be the sweet spot. Cough, cough. Every muscle in my body was spasming. The iron taste of blood began to fill my mouth. Something was very wrong, but still, Eric seemed unbothered. They developed the antibiotic years ago, but the pathogen, pathogen itself took a bit longer. I don't even know what that means. What's a pathogen? Like the virus. The virus? Yeah. If the virus is having such a hard time surviving, then just let it die. I think I got a hunch here. Oh, if they distribute the virus, then they can make money by selling... Oh! Oh! And, and the bug could only survive in the blood of the young, yes. is what he said. Yes. Until we learned the bug could only survive in the blood of the young, under 25 seems to be the sweet spot, social media consultant. 
I've heard of going viral, but... <laughs> oh, oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh. Yeah. Unfortunately, the pathogen is pretty nasty stuff. And you got quite the exposure to it a week ago. Sitting in this office, bacteria seeded in the air. When you and the other candidates left our office, you started an outbreak. You, especially Evan, what with your predisposition to coughing and filling the air with particulates, in a week, everyone in the state under 25 will sound like you, coughing so hard you can't breathe. And that's when we announced Tanafi's miracle drug. Our company will earn enough money for another 100 years, and no investment banker will ever be able to afford to take us over. I fell out of my chair, gasping for breath, but I couldn't get any oxygen. Raw from coughing, my throat had swollen shut. Still, my torso convulsed, desperate for air. I punched my chest, hoping to break a rib and tear open my lungs, anything to get a single molecule of oxygen, but none came. My ears filled with a roar as my vision began to fade. As I slipped out of consciousness, Eric came around the desk and stood over me. On second thought, Eric rasped, we probably don't need a social media consultant after all. We plan for people to learn about our company a bit more organically. Eric opened the door and four of the scientists grabbed my weakening arms and legs. The last word I heard were Eric's, last one, fire up the furnace. So, are you scared? As mentioned before, this episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can take a class on video editing or photography, or in my case, animating with ease in After Effects with instructor Jake Bartlett. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. That's a sick burn. He didn't even get the job. <laughs> oh, he got the job. He could have at least said like, you know what? Yeah, got the job. I like I put him in the furnace. Also, I like the quip at the end. He didn't have to be that clever. Like, you know what? We don't need a social media consultant. We're gonna have people learn about it a little more organically. It's good. It's pretty good. It's good. Like he, he, that really was for him yeah. because that guy is not gonna say it to anybody. You know. Love it. I love any story that ends with someone getting burned alive. Can I say that? I don't think you can. Well, I like that the story is being told by a dead guy. Yes, because you're like, oh, this guy clearly makes it because who's telling the story? Yeah. Thank you to Garrett Werner for writing the story. And uh, I guess we'll see you all next week. Sleep tight. Or not at all. Ha, 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 ha.